following on from the filming of the last smartphone show and all that news from 3GSM, especially the Nokia E90 communicator, I was offered a short-term loan of one of the prototypes and I couldn't resist previewing it for you. In this show I also look at video blocking from your smartphone. What are the main do's and don'ts? Well, after the news mayhem that was 3GSM for the last smartphone show, peace has prevailed at last. The only significant news is the HTC Vox, shown here, uh, which is making its way onto various markets, either under its own name, the S710, or here is the orange SPV E650. Uh, although, strangely, it's not being released in America or in the UK yet. Still, Windows Mobile 6, seen here on the SPV E650 and other devices to come, looks quite promising. We'll be reviewing one of these units very shortly. Finally, there was a whole news story I'd prepared about the N93i, reviewed in one of the recent smartphone shows that now apparently has continuous autofocus added to its video recording, except that it now hasn't and they pulled the feature again. Never mind. And now for the big news in the E-series. Well, relatively big anyway. This is the Nokia E90, the latest in their legendary communicator series. Slimmed down quite a bit from the 9500, which in turn was smaller than the 9210, which in turn, etc, etc. It still has a similar form factor and ethos with a usable cover phone and a more powerful widescreen laptop-like computer inside, including a full QWERTY keyboard. Now note that this is very much a preview. This is one of the prototype E90s, but it'll give you an excellent idea of what to expect. The cover phone is no longer effectively a separate device, but is simply an alternate display onto whatever the device is doing. Thus you can start a standard Series 60 application on the cover phone using it in traditional one-handed fashion, including using predictive text, and then open the clamshell mid-sentence and carry on without interruption using the full display and keyboard. This applies to absolutely any application and is a fabulously useful feature, truly giving you the best of both worlds. Well, almost. You'll remember I mentioned S60 just now. This is the first communicator to use S60 for its interface. The older 9500 used a niche interface called Series 80 that was essentially a descendant of the old Scion software line. With the E90 and S60, there's now a complete break from any last remnants of that heritage, leaving aside the, uh, the core Symbian OS, of course. With S60 basically designed for smaller screens, Nokia have had to make some serious tweaks to the core applications, such as Contacts, Calendar, File Manager and Gallery. But they've done a good job, in my opinion. The clamshell concept is something that's been more or less unique to Scion and then to Nokia over the years. And it still works well for anyone hoping to leave a, a two kilogram laptop at home and use this 200 gram smartphone instead. The build quality is exemplary and virtually the whole thing is made of cool metal. The hinges do take a little getting used to, um, but you quickly learn the best way to open it if you want the screen to be displayed at an angle. Or you could just open it flat, of course. The keyboard's smaller than that on the 9500, but larger than that on any current thumb keyboard device. I'd rate it as the same speed, uh, over 30 words a minute, as devices like the HTC Titan. Key feel was quite hard on this prototype, but this might be tweaked before final release. I loved the traditional application shortcut buttons along the top of the keyboard. These make a big difference in usability, saving a lot of work on the main app menu key and D-pad. And my own and multimedia key, both configurable, add extra speed of access to your favourite applications and there are extra shortcuts to profiles, help, Bluetooth, infrared and screen brightness, all saving you time. S60 is behind all the latest multimedia smartphones these days and the E90 has brought the communicator line bang up to date in this respect. Despite the device's business focus, there's a really rather decent 3.2 megapixel stills camera with excellent autofocus, activated using a dedicated button on the top. Amazingly, this camera also shoots video at a full VGA resolution at up to 30 frames a second, making it quite suitable for home DVDs and business use. Video playback on the large screen is also terrific, as you can see here, and you can listen to stereo music over the loud built-in speakers or via a, a 2.5mm four-way stereo headset plugged in here at the bottom. The other big convergence talking point, of course, with the E90 is GPS. It was unspectacular on the prototype, but I don't want to draw too many conclusions from this yet. Personally, I'm still a fan of standalone GPS receivers that can be positioned anywhere in your car for best reception. But built-in GPSs do have the advantage of simplicity, and they're obviously better for walkers. 
It's still quite early days for this new communicator. Whole chunks of the interface and software suite have clues that the software isn't actually finished yet. The hardware is extremely solid and it's obviously pretty close to the final product, although the keypad backlight on the cover phone wasn't working on the prototype. Adapting S60 to the uh, 800 pixel widescreen communicator display isn't a perfect fit. Uh, where Nokia have worked on the core applications to make them more suited, the changes work well. Where they haven't got around to it yet, the expanse of wasted space speaks volumes. And, as many people have said, for this to be a flagship enterprise device with S60's traditional lack of support for Outlook categories is a bit of a non-starter. Let's hope this gets added into S60 before the E90's ROM is finalised. Still, once you get into the built-in quick office or an e-book reader, uh, making full use of that huge, huge screen, much is forgiven. The E90 is a tremendous opportunity for Nokia to win back the sizeable market segment that's currently served by the likes of the HTC Universal and HTC Titan. And I'll bring you a review of the full production E90 in a couple of months' time. Oh, how I wish I was blogging from somewhere sunny where the weather's predictable. I had a nice location set up for this feature and then down comes the drizzle, so I'm back to video blogging in my car. So, you want to start a video blogging on a smartphone yourself. Here are a few brief tips. Don't try and do a video blog about smartphones. That one's been done. Do, do have a really interesting angle or topic, either for the whole blog or for individual episodes. Random wibblings aren't going to win you much of a regular audience. Three, do write a basic script. Improvising the camera will mean you stum stumble and waste a lot of time. And don't make it too obvious that you're reading from a script. Try to fix the script directly behind the camera. Four, do make sure your camera is up to the job. If you want to use a smartphone for the job, then great. It will mean you can do outside footage really easily, weather permitting. And it's also just plain cool. But do try and use the Nokia N93, N93i or N95 if you can. Filming with lesser devices will look just plain amateurish. Let me illustrate with some test footage. Video blogging with the N93 handheld, a native resolution of 640 by 480 by 30 frames a second. Handheld video blogging again, this time with the Nokia N90, 352 by 288 pixels by 15 frames a second, also with a Carl Zeiss lens. And the cheapest way to do handheld video blogging, this on the Nokia E70, 352 by 288 pixels, 15 frames a second again, this time with um, a bog standard optics. This is the same sort of camera you'd find in the Nokia E70 or the N76 and a dozen other Nokia N-series and E-series devices. In addition to being typical of much of Nokia's smartphone range, the E70 footage is roughly the same sort of quality that you'd get from any top-end Windows mobile device none of which are really optimised for photography or video recording. Although passable at first glance, the leap in quality when going to any of the uh, N90-something devices is hopefully clear to see, and I can recommend them as first choice if you're serious about creating video on your smartphone. You'll also need a tripod. If you can't find the official one, then I recommend my cardboard version. No, really, over on allaboutsymbian.com. 5. Do keep your show snappy. My early smartphone shows went up to as long as half an hour and even I can't sit through them anymore. Aim for 10 minutes max and preferably half that. 6. YouTube's probably the easiest way to get your videos online. Just upload the MP4 files from your desktop computer. But many other blogs uh, now host video, including video uploaded directly from a smartphone. If you're serious about video blogging, you'll want to choose one that's RSS and iTunes compatible. But don't worry, it probably won't cost you any money. Good luck and let me know your URL when you're up and running, creating regular video content on your smartphone.